I was asked by the organizing committee first to show you the inside of my jacket. It looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Second, they asked me to show you a moonwalk, but I can't do it correctly. I give you just an impression. Sorry, Michael. I'm, I'm sorry. So the idea for moonwalk is you lift this leg. I have. It's good. And you go back with the other one, then, oh sorry, did I do the wrong? Yeah, then I, you have to go this, this. Does it look? <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. um, I didn't know in advance, otherwise I would have trained. So I was announced that the head of the Austin Research Institute for Artificial Intelligence and I'm often asked, why are you doing artificial intelligence? And my answer is, I want to compensate for my natural stupidity. <laughs> Therefore, I brought some notes here in case I need them, which I start with. So what are we doing? Uh, we are doing research in artificial intelligence since about Oh, already a quarter of a century, so that's quite something. And we started with knowledge representation, reasoning, learning, which is quite difficult, until we found out that we are missing something. And that came to our knowledge in the mid of the 90s. Uh, we always learn that there is a contrast between rationality and emotionality. So the ideal subject for economics is the rational one, not the emotional one. Now there were done several experiments in the uh, 90s which showed that this is not true. If you take persons who have a lesion for example, in the amygdala or in other parts of the brain and who do not experience much of emotion. This can be also um, from uh, their birth onwards. Uh, then you would suppose they make better decisions as per than persons who are emotional. And there is an experiment where you can find out if a person is um, very emotionally reactive, you show them something horrifying. And the best thing, or one of the very good things is, when an eye, a film, a video where an eyeball is removed, the person is conscious, and for some uh, dangerous cancer in the eyeball, you remove it, you pull it out, and, uh, and at the very same time, you make several uh, tests, uh, you record physiological signals. Now, I wanted to know that too. I was sitting there, was experiencing that, and if you would now ask me, do you know if you are emotional or not? My answer is, I don't know, because the woman sitting in front of me collapsed, fell out, I had to take care of her. So, I know I have empathy, but I don't know if I'm emotional. <laughs> uh, um, it turned out uh, that those people who are not emotional are worse decision makers. And since then, there were many experiments which show in order to make good decisions, you have to have emotions. So rationality and emotionality should go together. So we had to study that. We did AI without emotions. And so we studied that. And in 2003, we published the book, Emotions in Humans and Artifacts, which <coughs> I may mention in passing, was published by MIT Press, um, and which is a medium quality publisher <laughs> and, and um, we are quite happy so we have to consider emotion we have to find out what is the emotional state of a person we have to process that 
and then we have to show emotions. And then we came to the idea that's not enough. We are missing something. We are missing a model of personality. Now, we were not the only ones. There are many uh, researchers uh, worldwide who are thinking about that. And when we made uh, the, the test, the rehearsal for the presentation, I was asked, oh, that's so abstract. What is personality? Can you model personality? So I thought, I bring a short example lasting for, let's say, 90 seconds. And it's the BDI model, beliefs, desires, intentions. If you think about yourself, what makes up your personality? First, it is beliefs. You have beliefs about the world. For example, that this is liquid. If it falls down the glass, it will break, etc. But also beliefs about other persons beliefs about concepts, beliefs in the sense of an ideology or a religion could be Pastafarianism, which I just became a member after uh, <laughs> Nico gave his presentation. Unfortunately, I forgot my cap next time. Um, and uh, you have beliefs, you have desires, you have drives, you have motives, you have plans, etc. And those, your beliefs about the world and your drives and motives come together and form intentions. You have to decide between the drives under specific circumstances, etc. And the BDI model is one of several it's the one which I need not prepare any, and I'm a lazy person, so this is the only graph, and thank you very much, organizers, that you prepared it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so BDI is, uh, is, you understood it. And in future, you will think about yourself. Am I, be yes, this is my beliefs, oh, this is the wrong one, etc. So that's what we're doing. Next thing is, um, if you build personalities, those personalities will interact with other persons. We are social beings. And in our recent project, which was luckily sponsored uh, by the uh, European Commission, we investigated social engagement with robots and agents. Agents meaning emotional and intelligent software agents. Um, there are many aspects of that. One very simple is uh, trust building. Another one is turn taking. You may have experienced you are in a group, you want to say something, nobody listens, all the other continue talking. So it was the wrong moment for turn taking that you are the speaker now, to all the others listen. And some people are good, some are bad, but it's important to realize when to start taking the attention of the others. So these are several aspects which we are investigating. Now, and currently we are doing some research in awareness, because a good software agent should also observe what it is doing, naturally. And we learned quite a lot of brain research. I'm Professor Emeritus at the Center for Brain Research at the Medical University, in parallel to heading that research institute, so I'm happy to get information from my colleagues. Parallel to that was robotic research. And you know robots, as manipulators uh, who were uh, that, sorry, which, that, who, uh, that we were working. <laughs> That's the difficult thing, unfortunately. We come to that in a few minutes, in 8.0, oh no, 7.56, <laughs> five, 
Okay, uh, we come to that. And, uh, and uh, you know that robots are working in hazardous areas, etc. Now, uh, robots should be, and this is, for example, one big project in Germany, uh, supported by the Deutsche Bundesregierung and Exzellenzbank, cognition in technical systems. The roboticists found out that's not enough that robots do simple things. If they should be partners in a factory, on a workplace, they have to have these capabilities which are just described. They need not only have uh, a knowledge about what's going on and to learn, etc. They have to have social uh, aspects. They have to have emotions to understand that their partner now is absolutely upset and mad and don't ask him silly questions, not even intelligent ones, which may upset him too. So <laughs> there is a convergence between robotics research and artificial intelligence. And I hate to say intelligence. Now it's more, it's personality. That both has to come together. Question. Is this technology push, or is there a demand for that? One of them is workplace. We know we need more and more persons, which we don't have, to make smart things in companies. We need robots. Second, we have an inverse pyramid of ages. We have very few young people, and we have many old ones like me. I'm happy to be old. Um, and, uh, and now those old people become more and more fragile. They are not thinking of doing Michael Jackson's, Jackson's moonwalk, etc. And they need help. The situation now in Austria is that we import caretakers from other countries who pay lower wages, especially the Czech Republic. The Czech Republic has a problem, has not enough caretakers. They have to look for caretakers from the Ukraine or Belarus, etc. That is not the solution in the long run. What you have to do is you have to think about how can we help people becoming older elderly, as they are now euphemistically uh, said, um, they have to have, for example, artificial butlers, robots who help them stay in their homes and work for a long period and be alive and be happy there. Uh, now you will think, ah, I don't want a robot. Uh, I want a person. It means I am not worth so much money from my country. I have worked so hard. They sent me a robot. And this is the European aspect for now. I think it will change. You have a very different situation in Asia. In Asia, it is so that you want to show yourself strong, healthy, to show weakness. To another human being, you won't do it. So people there prefer to be taken care of by robots instead of persons. And I don't know how it will change. I'm very interested how this iPhone program, this new one, I don't want to advertise it. I have no chance to test it. And I have heard several pronunciations. One of them is Siri, but I heard also Siri, Siri, uh, Siri. Okay, but that is one which could change the opinion of people. Now we have this development, and we wonder where will that lead us? We improve robots. We improve their quote. Brains. There is a big project now going on in Europe. It's the Human Brain Project. 
and I'm, I will take, uh, I will participate in a workshop in, in a planning workshop next uh, Wednesday in Garching near Munich uh, about neuro robotics, something very interesting, fascinating, which I unfortunately have no time to talk about, maybe sometimes later, when I can better exercise the moonwalk. And, uh, and uh, so there is a strong development now, a need uh, to, to develop better and better robots. Recent, no, some time ago, a book was published Love and Sex with Robots, uh, by a British, uh, it, his name is, I forgot, David Levy. And uh, I also checked now, there is a truecompanion.com company who prepares robots for your wishes. And in the description it says it has three inputs, which I find is a very nice, uh, delicate description of, uh, of some organs which are highly valued, not only for inputs, <laughs> but it says inputs. Uh, and you can look it up in the internet. Uh, I have no experience with that, luckily. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully not for a long time or forever, uh, but um, the, the real one is by far preferable. <laughs> um, but you will agree with me. But still, there is a development in this direct direction. Uh, you can modify slightly its personality. It's a very simple personality. They are not up to date, but uh, in the FAQ list you find Oh, yes, you can talk with her about soccer. So if you have a need for a partner <laughs> with whom you can talk about soccer, I don't have. So there is a development. We have heard in 2045, um, maybe our PC will be uh, having the same information processing capability as a human brain, not that it will process information in the same way, but it will have the processing capabilities. The question is, where are we going from now? And that's part four, for which I have eight seconds, six seconds. So I will a little bit in the minus. I hope you apologize. Um, the <laughs> No, well, maybe not. Is the mic off? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then, then uh, we, have, we are facing a very fascinating development. It took evolution about 3.5 billion years to make us humans, not me especially, but all of us, uh, from a single cell. And we are doing, we are developing smart robots and we have, let's say, 30, 40, 50 years already time. It will take another 50 years, maybe it will take 100 years. And then there will be maybe as smart as we are or it's very unlikely that evolution stops there. They will become smarter. What can the future be? The future can be life like in paradise. Each of us has 17 robots. For example, like the old Greece, the in, in, the, in the antiquity, they had 17 slaves, one free citizen, 17 slaves. So they had a happy life. We will have robots even if we are um, after the Enlightenment, we need not have uh, a bad conscience that we have robots instead of slaves. Uh, or, this is one possible development. The other possible development is that uh, those persons which come after us will curse us what we have done. And I have no answer. Thank you.